We're speaking with Dr. William Overholt, a senior research fellow at Harvard University's Asia Center. I will ask him about the current trade conflict between the world's two largest economies. Uh, you've just returned from being on the ground in China. What's the mood there, knowing that they're locked in a trade war? Well, the mood is, is complex. Uh, uh, the Chinese don't know quite how to respond to President Trump, which, which is reasonable because uh, Trump is quite unpredictable. Uh, at the, among the Chinese intellectual elite, uh, there is considerable th sympathy for the uh, U.S. Uh, determination to fix some of the uh, serious problems, especially intellectual property. Uh, th there's uh, more support for President Trump uh, among the Chinese elite than I would have ever imagined possible. Interesting. Uh, at, at the, at the uh, uh, mass level, there's uh, a lot of nationalistic anger. There's confusion about how to respond to President Trump uh, because, on the one hand, there are important, reasonable, negotiable demands, uh, most notably on intellectual property. Uh, at the broader level, uh, some of Trump's advisors are essentially demanding that the Chinese change the whole structure of their economy into something like the the American economy and uh, that's completely unreasonable and completely uh, non-negotiable so they're not sure exactly where Trump himself is coming from. Do you think that a trade deal can be reached by the March 1st deadline? Uh, I don't think a comprehensive deal uh, is even imaginable by the March 1st deadline. Um, I think if they make progress that possibly the deadline could be extended. Uh, any actual deal will, will be a long process. Uh, first of all, you, you have to get agreement and principle uh, at the top level. And then uh, implementation in China uh, will be a long and difficult process because the, the local levels don't necessarily respond to what the top level says. So it's going to be uh, prolonged and conflictual. In his speech celebrating the 40th anniversary of reform and opening up, Chinese President Xi was defiant, saying no one can dictate China's economic development path. He didn't seem to offer any clear solutions for the slowing economy or U.S. trade demands. What do you make of his comments, and what do they mean for a possible trade deal in the near term? Well, I think his defiance responds to uh, what is in effect uh, Washington's demand that that uh, China transform its e its economy into something like a Western economy and, and accept Western dominance, uh, and that's the only response a Chinese leader can have. On the other hand, on the practical issues, the negotiable issues. Uh, I think Chinese actions are signaling that they, they want a deal. Uh, some economists have argued that uh, putting the 25 percent tariffs on the 200 billion of Chinese imports to the U.S. could tip the world economy into recession. Uh, do you agree with that? It's actually very hard to know. Uh, economists have been talking loudly for months about how strong the U.S. economy is. Uh, there are more indicators of fragility now than there have been. Uh, a recession is coming at some point. We've had the longest uh, growth period in, in modern history. When the recession comes, 
the reality is that the U.S. economy is floating on a sea of debt. The Chinese economy is floating on a sea of debt. The European economy is floating on a sea of debt. The Japanese economy is floating on a sea of debt. Uh, this recession is going to be, the next recession is going to be a, a long, deep, bad one. And we have very few fiscal and monetary tools to fight it. So, so worry is appropriate. Very good. Dr. Overholt, thank you for your time. Much appreciated.